What's going on guys? It's Merrill Kelly. This is Between the Seams. Merrill Kelly outstanding here tonight. Swing and a miss, strike him out. First and foremost, I feel like is the most obvious one for most pitchers at least is four seam fastball. Just try to throw it and try to locate it as best as you can. If you leave it over the plate, it tends to get hit pretty hard. Two seam fastball, just right there in the middle of the seams. Um, try to get that downward, inward action to a right-handed hitter. Uh, try to get in on his hands as best as I can. Try to maybe get a ground ball with it. Next is the changeup, which is probably my favorite pitch to throw. Probably the pitch that for a little while carried kind of my career, I would say. Without it, I don't think I'd be sitting here talking to you guys today. Knuckle curve is right there. Spike it on the top. Um, just try to really get that seam and, and pull down with it. Try to get that 12-6 action. Um, and the goal is either uh, kind of an 0-0 steal a strike or with two strikes, have them swing and miss at a ball in the dirt. And then the last one is uh, just a cutter, which I haven't thrown. I've only thrown the cutter for about three years now, um, but it's been a, it's a pretty fun pitch to throw. It's been a lot, it's been helpful. Um, with everything else that I throw, it plays off uh, pretty well. The reason I have five is just to keep them guessing as much as I can. Pitching at least is about messing up timing and, and kind of changing your looks and, and not letting the hitter kind of get comfortable or sitting on one or two pitches. To have all five working and being able to throw all five for strikes is, is probably rare. Those are the days that are a lot of fun. Those are the days that, you know, you go seven, eight innings and, you know, you kind of cruise through because, you know, the hitters have to honor five different things. Um, but most of the time, that's not the case. Most of the time, I would say, I would say at least, I would say maybe three. You know, on, on any given day, if you have three pitches that are working well and you can throw them for strikes, that's pretty solid. Most pitchers, if you look at their percentages on, on kind of the pitches that they throw, they probably have a main core group and then they might have one or two other ones that they can throw if they need to. But the goal for me was just have as many as I can to, uh, you know, just be effective with different looks and different timings. was on YouTube one night on going down kind of a YouTube rabbit hole um, that you kind of fall into sometimes you know video just turns into videos and turns into videos um, and I came across a video of Greg Maddox talking about his you know kind of doing the same thing that we're doing here talking about his pitch grips and how he throws things and and I wanted to throw a cutter I knew it was something that I wanted to add but I wasn't sure I'd never thrown it before and I hadn't really talked to anybody who knew how to throw one or did throw one. Um, so I looked at that video and he actually showed how what his cutter grip was. Um, so I took that and I said, you know, if it works for Greg Maddox, then you know, hopefully it'll work for me. You know, what technology has is, is been able to provide us with, the information that's out there, that it's readily available. You know, you hop on YouTube, you hop on Twitter, you hop on Instagram. Um, there's accounts on each of those pages that talk nothing but either baseball or even more specifically pitching. It's such an advantage, you know, compared to what we had coming up. You know, you had your pitching coach and you had your dad, maybe. This is kind of who you uh, relied on. Uh, but nowadays, you know, there's, there's so many resources out there that are available. I think it's a really cool tool for um, not only kids, but, you know, parents growing up. If, say you weren't a baseball player growing up and you don't really know how to teach your kid or how to tell them to move or how to tell them to throw, boom, you hop on YouTube and you have all the answers right there. So it's, it's affording luxuries to, you know, not only kids, but their parents that are able to try to mold their kids into the pitcher that they, you know, maybe watching like Pedro or, or Randy Johnson, guys like that. I didn't know that I had high spin rate until I got to the Dimebacks and everybody told me that, you know, the breaking ball was really good and, and the fastball has high spin rate on it. Um, so I don't try to do that on purpose, it's just how it comes out of my hand, it's just how I throw it. Um, does it help? I don't know, you know, I, I guess uh, you'd probably have to ask some analytics guys on that question. Um, I have noticed that the swings on the fastball, um, you know, are a little different than I guess back in the day because I think part of that is, like I said, I, I threw a lot of two seams. I wasn't used to seeing um, swings. I wasn't used to really seeing my four seam in the zone a lot. Um, but yeah, it's it's cool, I guess. It's uh, people tell me it's good. So as long as uh, 
As long as they like it up there, then I guess I like it down here. <laughs> My opinion I've struggled throwing my change up kind of the beginning of the year it wasn't it wasn't as good as I thought it could be or in my opinion it wasn't as good as it has been in the past um, and there was a big situation with um, Ian Desmond we had, I think it was a full count we had kind of battled and we hadn't thrown a change up um, just because like I said it wasn't I wasn't as comfortable throwing it in that moment as I usually am I decided to throw it and uh, he swung and missed at it and it was a, it was a big strikeout that pitch fired me up because uh, I like to throw it like I said a lot and I, I haven't or I hadn't until that point thrown it as much as I would have liked to throw it then and, and get a swing and miss and get a strikeout that's probably the one that, that comes to mind right now So what do we got? We got Andrew Benatendi. How many outs do we have? You said we have two? First, first first oh, this is the first hitter, okay. He let off that game. See, like I said, my memory is not great. Open him up, I'm guessing fastball away. Yep, nice, nice, at least went strike one. Remember that kid's strike one. It's huge, changes a lot of things. Ooh, I got away with that one. I bet he wishes he uh, had that pitch back. I'm kind of one of those guys that, that I try to make every delivery kind of the same. Ooh, that was a nice curveball. I think I would have liked it a little further down. I think I was trying to throw it in the dirt and get him to swing and miss at it, but I'll take the ground ball. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not really one of those guys, you know, you see like a, like a, take a Justin Verlander, for example, you know, beginning of the game, he's, you know, nice and easy, kind of 92, 94, and then, you know, all of a sudden when we get later in the game, he starts really letting it go and it's it's 97. I just try to make every pitch the exact same. Let's see what I started him with. I'm gonna guess cutter, but I'm not sure. Yep, I was right. Nice. Cutter for strike one. Nice, two for two, strike one. Not only does it just put the, the hitter in defense mode right away. Ooh, yeah, that was over the plate. That's what Ben Attendee should have done with that second fastball I threw him. Um, yeah, it just it puts the hitter in defense mode right away. Um, it kind of just allows you to attack the hitter more than when you get strike one rather than falling behind. You know, when you fall behind, you have to throw pitches in the zone and, uh, you know, hitters are, are ready for those pitches in the zone because they know that they know that you're behind and they know that you need to strike. But situations definitely dictate what type of pitches you're trying to throw. Um, you know, in a situation like this, like you said, of trying to get the ground ball, um, get out of here with, with no damage, just giving up one hit. Um, you know, say there's a runner in scoring position or, or a guy on third base and, you know, you're thinking more on the ground rather than something in the air, kind of eliminate either the, uh, you know, the RBI single or the, you know, sack fly. I'm gonna guess that we're, I'm gonna try to throw a two seam or a change up down. Change up, yep. Now I'm going in. Nice pitch. And I went back to the changeup for the double play. The trusty changeup. My stuff and the way that it plays off each other, it just doesn't, um, it doesn't equate to strikeouts. It equates to ground balls and, and early, early weak contact. So which, that's what I try to do. Striking out, it's, it's hard sometimes. You throw way too many pitches when you're trying to strike a bunch of people out. Um, I'd rather throw three pitches or less is kind of my mentality for each at bat. If I can get an out in three pitches or less and move on to the next one, um, I'm happy. And that, for me, that's what gets me later into games. Um, sometimes when I start trying to strike people out, I start picking a little too much. I start getting a little fine. Um, and before I know it, I've walked you know two or three guys and and then I have to throw that perfect pitch to get the contact rather than just trusting what I do and, and trying to get that contact um, earlier rather than later.